Last semester, you were introduced to the idea of a solution, which was defined as a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Quite often, one of the components of such a mixture is present in large excess. We call that component the solvent, and all other components the solutes. If we want to write the dissolution process as a chemical reaction, we represent it as a change of state. Solutions with water as the solvent are common enough that they have a special designation, AQ, which stands for aqueous. In other solvents, we refer to the state as SOL, for solute. When we're dealing with ionic solutes in aqueous solution, like the top example, it's important to remember that the individual ions are separated in the solution like this. It is important to not be too restrictive in our understanding of what constitutes a solution. These are the defining traits of a solution. It is homogeneous, meaning that its composition is uniform throughout the material. Its physical state is typically the same as the state of the solvent. So, for example, an aqueous solution is typically a liquid. The components of the solution are dispersed at a molecular level. So, milk, for example, is not a solution because it contains micro droplets of milk fat that are much larger than individual molecules. Instead, milk is a colloid. The solution, when left in its current conditions, will not spontaneously settle or separate. And the concentrations of the solutes can be varied continuously, although there may be limits to the range of concentrations that are possible. So, for example, water should not be thought of as a solution of hydrogen and oxygen because the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is fixed. Similarly, solid sodium chloride shouldn't be thought of as a solution of sodium and chloride ions for the same reason. But anything that meets these listed criteria is a solution. Solutions can be gases. Air is a solution of oxygen, carbon dioxide, and a variety of other gases in nitrogen. Solutes can be different phases from the solvents. Uh, soft drinks are a solution of carbon dioxide, a gas, in water, along with other solutes. Solvents can be solids. For example, hydrogen gas can dissolve in palladium, which allows the catalysis of some important reactions. We've already talked about alloys, like brass, bronze, steel, and sterling silver. These are solid in solid solutions. Gas phase solutions are not particularly difficult to conceptualize. Remember the postulates of the kinetic molecular theory of gases. In particular, that the intermolecular interactions between the molecules of a gas are negligible. So for gas phase solutions, as long as the individual components have enough kinetic energy to be in the gas phase in the first place, you can mix them in any ratio you want. The molecules just ignore each other, except when undergoing elastic collisions. As long as the molecules don't react, gases form solutions. But when we move to condensed phases, solid or liquid, we have to start worrying about phase separation. Ethanol and water form a solution. Oil and water do not. Salt and water form a solution. Lead iodide and water do not. So this raises the question, what factors do we need to consider when trying to determine which combinations form solutions? It generally comes down to the intermolecular forces between the solute and solvent compared to those among pure solute and pure solvent. We'll dive deeper into this in later lessons, but the general rule that you may have heard is like dissolves like. This phrase is referring to the nature of the intermolecular interactions. Ethanol and water both have hydrogen bonding and are polar, so they form a solution. But oil molecules are nonpolar and generally do not hydrogen bond, and so oil and water don't mix. The way to think about this is that the water molecules are held to each other quite tightly because of that hydrogen bonding. Pushing something between them requires breaking those hydrogen bonds, which costs energy. So if that thing that is pushed in between can form hydrogen bonds to water in place of the ones that got broken, then that makes up for the broken hydrogen bonds. So ethanol can do it, oil cannot. A seeming contradiction to the like-dissolves-like rule is aqueous solutions of ionic compounds. Hydrogen bonds, dominant in water, are rather unlike the ion-ion interactions within a salt, and yet many ionic compounds dissolve in water. What's going on here? Well, several things. The first has to do with entropy, or the disorder in the system. We'll get to that in later lessons. The second is that the ion-dipole interactions between the ions and the water are stronger than hydrogen bonds. And finally, 
Despite ion-ion interactions being particularly strong, remember that in a crystal, while the nearest neighbor interactions are attractive, the second nearest neighbor interactions are repulsive. So separating the ions from each other and surrounding them with quite strong ion-dipole interactions is often favorable.